Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Lauren and my workshop. Uh, today we're going to be talking about food and uh, food photography. And for those of you who have been on the forums, you'll notice that I often will say there's a big difference between taking pictures of food and food photography. And it's very true. You can take something and do what I call plop and shoot, and you plop it down on the table, and you take your camera, and you shoot it. Okay? That's taking pictures of food. I want to teach you about food photography, which comes, it takes into effect things like how to choose the proper food, how to prepare the food, how to make the food look the best it possibly can, then how to take that food, prepare it properly, and then style it to teach you how to time yourself, because timing is absolutely critical when it comes to food work. If you're doing an ice cream shot and you think you got everything set, and you get your ice cream out there and all of a sudden your lights aren't working properly and you go, wait a minute, and you come back and you got soup, okay? You have to have your timing down very close to the, to the second uh, for certain things. Um, I want you to understand some things about food science, okay? Now I'm a foodie, a lot of you people know that I've been cooking for a lot of years. Um, I love food. And if you're going to be doing your own food photography, knowing how to prepare it and what happens to the food when you cook it is a very important thing. Um, we're going to cover that kind of stuff. After the class itself portion, what we're going to do is I'm going to break you up into groups. I have a lot of stuff over here. And so nobody gets the same shots. What we're going to do is we're going to allow each of you within your group to create your own. Take all the props that we have over here, and if you want something else, ask me about it because we do have some stuff in the back room that we can bring out, and I want you to create the different dishes. Everybody in that group will have a chance to create dishes of their own. Okay? Now, that some of the things that we're going to be doing is I, this morning I came in and I prepped uh, with a homemade marinara sauce with some uh, meatballs. These can be used in a variety of ways. Okay? Yeah, we got bread, we can do subs, okay? You can take them and turn them into Asian. I'll teach you how to take an Italian ingredient, an Italian finished product, and make it Asian, and nobody's gonna know the difference, simply because of how you make it look. Remember, with food photography, they can't taste it. But what you wanna do is you wanna give them that feeling of what they are tasting, just by the looks. That is why food photography needs to be very precise. It needs to elicit that visual thing because you don't have the aromas to trigger a sensation. Okay? You don't have the taste to go, damn, that's good. Okay? All you have is visual. So if you do the visual properly, what's going to happen is you're going to look at something and they're going to go, damn, I want that. You want them to sit there and stick their head into that monitor and start licking it when they see that thing. I'm also going to cover uh, parts uh, dealing with restaurants and how to approach restaurants in uh, you know, trying to work deals for, for their shots. Um, Susan and I have talked about some things. So I'm going to let everybody know, and I'll tell you a few more different things. Okay? So getting down to it, and if you have any questions, please just blurt them out. Okay? We don't stand on formality here. I want you to feel relaxed. I want you to have fun. You're going to be eating some. I think fairly decent food. I'm going to be making, uh, like I said, I got the meatballs and the marinara sauce. I'm also going to be, we're going to do like a little Mexican theme with appetizers. I'm going to be making a uh, habanero and pineapple Cilantro. guacamole. Hmm? No. <laughs> no. You can leave. <laughs> um, so it's going to be a, a uh, uh, habanero and pineapple guacamole. I'm going to make a regular guacamole. I'm going to make a, a pico de gallo so we can have our appetizers, okay, so you can get to shoot appetizers. Uh, we'll then have the meatballs, which I, I explained before. I also have some scallops. I got some beautiful dry pack scallops that we're going to make. Um, I even got, brought some of my scallop shells from home. You can do a ton of things with these. I'm going to show you some intricate knife cuts that you can do to really make them look good, okay, like I said. For all those on Shutterstock, what I always say about food photography, watch the details. It's those little details that will take your shot from eh to wow. Okay? And no detail is too small. 
Uh, so we're going to do, and after that, then I also have some uh, black cod that I bought. Uh, we can do a fish dish. And then I also created for uh, Kim over here. Uh, I mentioned on the line one time that it's about creme brulee. And I, unfortunately, I don't have the time to do a creme brulee here. So I decided I was going to design a dessert uh, that we could do. So what we're going to do, be doing is some brulee bananas, okay, which is going to be served with a caramel sauce and a uh, caramel and coconut ice cream. And we're going to turn out, teach you how to make some canals, and it's going to, the dish is going to look absolutely great. And yes, you can eat the stuff when we're done. So when we're done shooting the pico de gallo and the guacamole, we got tortilla chips from the restaurant last night. Feel free to nibble away. Okay? Okay, so what we're going to do is we break it down here. I'm going to teach you how to choose and properly prepare the food. Um, Kim, can you do me a favor? Can you go grab me the two red peppers, please? The first and most important thing about buying or, or, or food photography is what you buy. If you start off with a garbage product, it's going to look more garbagey as you cook it. Okay? Now, when people take my class, what I do is I take them to the store. And we go in the produce section, and I put a blindfold on them. And I'll hand them things, and I'll say, I want you to pick the best one. Not by looking, but by using your senses. Okay? Grocers are sneaky little buggers. They do all kinds of things to make you think that their stuff is good when it isn't. When you deal with produce, look at the stems. Okay? These have been sitting for a day, so they're not going to look good. If the tip of the stem looks too good and the rest of the stem is kind of eh-eh, what they do is they come by and they trim it to make it look better. Okay? They also do something what's called backstocking. They will take the oldest stuff, move it forward. So you go in and you take that because it's right in front when the good stuff is in the back. So go in the back. Also go by feel. Okay? You're going to feel things. If you're dealing with peppers, peppers should be tight. They should be smooth. If you feel something that isn't tight and smooth, the pepper is old. Feel it. Produce fruit. Feel it. It should be heavy for its weight. If it's not, what has happened, it's old, the moisture has gone out of it, which means you're losing that, you're losing flavor. Okay? So I need a volunteer right now to come up, and somebody's going to tell me which is the better pepper without looking. Jane, come on. Be careful where you walk. Now, I don't want you to look. What I want you to do, I'm just going to hand you these. I want you to close your eyes, and I just want you to feel them, feel all around them, and I want you to tell me which is the good one and which is the bad one. And it's kind of close. <laughs> yeah, that's good one. Very good. You were absolutely right. Did you feel some of the like, wrinkles right here? I felt the wrinkles, but I also thought it was irregular. Mm -hmm. It was wider on one side than the See other. See these here? You got little pits, little wrinkles. This pepper is not as good as this pepper. If you were going to use this pepper, when you were cooking, or if, you were, you, when you, if you're going to cook it and heat it, it's not going to be that much of an issue. But if you're using it as a garnish, then you've got an issue. Because when I critique shots, when people post them, I always look at the littlest thing, the smallest little thing, and say, that's what you have to watch. Okay? So I'm going to pass these around, and everybody can kind of just feel them, and you'll see what we mean. This one here is the batter one. This one is the good one. Okay? just so you get a feel of what it's like. So picking the food is very important. When you're dealing with proteins, fish, um, meats, chicken, things like that, <clears throat> if you're getting, if you're buying meat, what you want it to do is you want to have, you don't want it bright, brilliant red, okay? But you don't want it brown. You want a nice reddish color that has a little vibrancy to it. If you get something that's kind of older and brown, it's, it's good if it's aged beef, 
but the stuff in a grocery store, you're not buying aged beef. You're just buying something that's been there for a while longer. When you're buying produce, chicken, things like that, and it's all you know wrapped up, if there's juice, a lot of juice in the, in the package, pass it up. Don't buy it. There should not be a lot of juice in there, okay? When you're cooking chicken, any poultry, and especially with food photography, if you're planning on eating it later, make sure it's cooked because you can kill somebody by serving them raw poultry, especially a pregnant woman. Always check when you're dealing with, with your guests or whatever you're, who's going to be eating your stuff, find out about allergies, which is why I asked everybody if you had any nut allergies or any allergies whatsoever. I don't want to prepare something and have somebody die here on me. So protein, make sure uh, the chicken, make sure you cook it properly. And if you're going to be doing a, a chicken shot, okay, and you're not going to cook it all the way, make sure you take it back if you're going to eat it and cook it. Now, why do I always say a lot of times when you're, when you're cooking proteins, you don't want to cook them as far as you would as you're going to eat them, you know, if, you, if you're going to eat it just you know, for a meal. There's a difference between preparing food for photography and preparing food for consumption. Okay? When you take a protein, meat, chicken, fish, things like that, when you put heat to it, what happens is you are, you're exciting the protein molecules. Okay? And what happens is they tighten. They form strands. These strands wrap around each other. And what does that do? It pushes the moisture out. So if you're ever cooking meat or chicken or something and you look at it and you see this moisture coming up to the top, that's the moisture being forced out because the proteins are being cooked. It reaches the top, now it evaporates. So what have you done? You push the moisture out of the meat. So if you were to take a shot of that and cut into it, what you're going to get is kind of like a gray inside. So what you do is you be very careful. If you're doing a steak, get a hot pan, a little bit of butter or oil in it, put it in there, sear it for about two or three minutes, Turn it over, sear it for about two minutes, put it in the oven for about five minutes. Until it's, if you're not planning on cutting into it, just for a couple of minutes, okay? Because if you cook it too long, it's gonna dry out, okay? And it's gonna look kinda grayish, okay? When you're done cooking a protein, tent it with aluminum foil, let it rest. Because what that does is, it, the meat's all excited, okay? Everything's flying around in there. All the juices are going all up. It wants to get out. You have to give it a little time for it to cool off and have the juices redistribute into the meat. So if you, have you ever taken a steak and cooked the steak on the grill or something or on, in, a, in a frying pan and then immediately cut into it and all the juices flow out? That's why. Because all the juices are near the surface, you cut it out and they want a place to go, they go and now you're eating a tough, dry steak. If you tent it, with some aluminum foil and let it rest for five or 10 minutes, what happens is it relaxes. The juices will go back in, you cut it, you now have a juicy piece of meat, okay? When you're cooking, here's a little tip. A lot of people will look at a steak or something and wonder, is it done, okay? You can, do, you can tell it just by using a finger, okay? Here's a little trick. Everybody take one of your hands, okay? Take your thumb, and your index finger. Put it together. Now feel the little palm part of your hand right there, okay? That's rare. Now bring your middle finger in. Feel the difference? That's medium rare. Now do your ring finger. Feel how it's harder yet? That's medium well. Now do your little finger. Feel how hard that is? That's well done. And that's what you call a ruined steak. So that's a little trick, how you can touch the food and then compare it to this and you'll know how it's done, okay? All righty, let's move on here. We've talked about the, you know, the preparing the food. Also remember sense of smell is very important, especially with fruits. Yes, Nick. Yeah, one question, so a lot of the stuff you're talking about, like is that trick here, because we haven't read this yet, so I don't mm -hmm. know how much of it should I be writing down, trying to commit to memory, how much. If you just want to, you know, just, you can, you can kind of, if you want to follow along with this and write some notes in it, feel free. If you want to, you know, read it over later for as a reference, feel free to right, do it that way. the stuff you're saying is mm -hmm. actually yes. here. Oh. Yes, it's all in there. Okay. It's all in there. Um, use your sense of smell. 
with fruits. Smell it. Does it smell? John's from Hawaii. He can sit there and take, you know, a mango, a pineapple, something like that, and he smells it. And what does it smell like? It smells sweet. It smells like a pineapple. Okay? That's what it should be. If you pick something up and you smell it and it has a musty smell, it's not going to be good. Don't get it. So use all your senses in picking the right foods. Once you have the right foods picked, you now can prepare them properly and you will end up with a much better uh, shot to shoot. Okay? So I've gone through the poultry, I've gone through the meat, the seafood. The one thing that most people think of, when you, when you smell a, a piece of fish, what does it smell like? A piece of raw fish, got it in, in a grocery store. Hopefully nothing. If you smell fish, or go, that's fishy, it's not good. If it's an ocean fish, a saltwater fish, it should smell like the sea. There should be no fish smell to it. If it doesn't smell like the sea and it's fresh, buy the pork chops. Okay? Don't be afraid to ask your grocer, your fishmonger, whatever, to smell it. You ever notice that the cases, they usually will pick up? That's why. Don't be afraid to get your nose in there and sniff. That's why I always like to say use a fishmonger because if you're buying fish, they have the best stuff. If you have a freshwater fish, again, it should smell fresh. It should smell clean. It shouldn't be gummy, okay? It's the same thing with a whole fish. If you're buying a whole fish, look at the eyes. The eyes should be clear and bulgy. If you touch them, and don't be afraid to touch the eye, it should not you know, go back into its socket and stay there. It should be glassy. Look at the gills. The gills should be bright red. If they're not bright red, it's older. Pick it up, smell it. Take the flesh, push it. If you push it and the dent stays there, buy the steaks, okay? It should spring back. It should have a nice glistening feel. Not slimy, but it should have a nice smooth feel to it, okay? If you're cooking clams or mussels, they should remain closed when you buy them. If you find one that's open or the shell is cracked, get rid of it. If you find one that's open a little bit before you cook it, press it a couple of times. Wake it up, because it's actually still alive. If it closes, it's good. If you press it and it just kind of stays open, chuck it. It's dead, it's bad. So clams, mussels, things like that, that's one thing you should really look for, okay? Scallops. We bought some scallops and we were very lucky when we went shopping. Usually what you're gonna find <clears throat> is they're gonna be in this white milky stuff. It's actually a chemical solution that they put, to, it's like a preservative. And what it does is it adds artificial weight to the scallops. So what you're doing is you're probably paying for about 40% water when you're buying them. There are basically two types of the, you know, the larger scallops. They are called dry pack, and there is wet pack. Wet pack is that it's in this white, milky liquid. I try and stay away from there. A scallop should almost have a rosy, light rosy color to it, a little pinkish. And I'll show you the ones that we have here that I picked. It should be dry, almost sticky, okay? That's what you're looking for when it comes to scallops. You know, if it doesn't look right, pass them right up. Okay?